According to Latter-day Saint doctrine in Joseph Smith, overwhelmingly, Jesus is the father of our salvation. So he's the father of our salvation. And because book. of that, I'm, I'm it's a new answer. Because of that, it makes all those verses in context. You can find that all over the Book of Mormon. And oh, actually, let's read some of it. Let's read no, 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 let's no, 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 some of it. It talks book. about this differentiation between the Father and the Son. Third Nephi 1923 book. says, And now, Father, I pray unto thee for them, and also for all those who shall believe on their words, that they may believe in me, that I may be in them as thou, Father, art in me. Yeah. Be- I have that I in my discussion. Christ, Nephi, the Son of God, I created the heavens and the earth and all things that in them are. I was with the Father from the beginning. I am in the Father, and the Father in me. These verses me give a lot of context on the sort of poetic language of Father, Son, Father, Art. Son. But in great context, you can see more of these things. And that's important to understand if you want to have a discussion on the you Book can, of Mormon, a divinity, you can, you can, you can, and who can the heavens. Arlen, this guy won't let me answer his, his. He's giving his statements and preaching again. Can I answer you now? I actually have that in my paper showing the contradiction in the Book of Mormon because that's an example of the Trinity in the Book of Mormon. So you're not listening. You think you're listening to my case you're only confirming my case even in what you cited that's not a qualification that's why you keep saying joseph smith latter-day saints what you cited was a trinitarian passage it's in my file that i prepared to show that the book of mormon contradicts itself because in one place jesus is not the father i even said that in my opening speech other places he is the father and at best what you cited even a modalist would quote that because that's simply mimicking this is the high priestly prayer of Jesus. If you grab Let random verses, you can always pull them out of context. However, okay. if you read you them all in context, to so another, another, context. A great, so an, another one of those verses that you were describing is in 3 Nephi chapter 28. And so it says this, And for this cause ye shall have a fullness of joy, and ye shall sit down in the kingdom of my Father, yea, your joy shall be full, even as the Father have given me fullness of joy, and ye shall be even as I am. And this is the Lord speaking to his disciples. Now, those words, ye shall sit down in the kingdom of my Father, yet your joy shall be full, even as the Father hath given me fullness of joy. These are two very important things to juxtapose. Because fullness of joy and becoming like the Father is the same gift let's, the Son gives to the people. Right. Let's make, sure we're, let's make sure we're asking que- let's make sure we're asking yeah, questions. Let's make sure we're asking questions. He's going into damage control mode because he knows there's yeah. one more insult until this is over. Yeah. One more insult until this is over. Okay, let's let's keep it. Let's, uh, come on, come on, come on, you guys. You guys, let's 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 chill. I know, I know, we antsy to answer the questions or antsy to give a rebuttal, but we have to have a discourse, a conversation. Not only for YouTube, but also for the audience. The audience is complaining right now that you guys are talking about each other. Okay, you guys. So let's make sure that we don't go on a uh, monologue. Let's make sure that we're dialoguing and we're asking questions. That's important. All right. Yeah, and Marley, he hasn't. He's been going into these speeches because he's going to damage control. So let me address him because I quoted Third Nephi. Let me now quote Ether and show that he's not solving the tension and the contradiction. He's quoting one verse that smacks of Trinitarianism, but ignoring the other verses that smack of modalism. But in his mind, they're harmonious, and I'm not going to let him assume it's harmonious. He's going to have to prove it, and he hasn't. Now, let me read Ether, because I want everyone to hear what he said. He's the father of our salvation. That's not what Ether said. Let me quote Ether chapter 4, verses 7 to 12. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Father of the heavens and of the earth, and all things that are in them are. The Father of the heavens and the earth and all things that are in them are. So yes, you can point to passages that seem to teach Trinitarianism, but you can point to other passages that smack of modalism, hence the contradiction. But then this contradicts later teaching that the Father was a man who became God, slept with one of his spirit wives and sired Jesus because the citation gave you from the Book of Mormon Hey Sam. God has been God. Hey Sam, so, I just Sam, I just think Quaku. I think he just left. I think he just left. Sorry, let him leave, bro. It's okay, bro. It's let me right. see. That's okay, brother. Hey man, this is gonna be good. It's gonna blow up your channel. I promise you. Let me see. Hold on one second. Don't be, hey, Marlon, brother. Don't be disappointed. This is going to be a blessing to you, man. It's gonna blow up your channel. <laughs> I promise you. I Maybe really want. Start. I really wanted the discussion on Sam. <laughs> I know. I wanted it too. But you see, he oh, got nervous. Man. He got nervous. He kept oh. going into speeches because he wasn't prepared for the honesty. He wasn't. 
Sorry, bro. Uh, it's okay. Uh, May God convict him with them. I'll try to get yeah, back yeah. in contact with him. Maybe you can get a bona fide, qualified Mormon scholar, not a young man. Because I know he's popular, but he's not qualified. Um, and I'm not saying to put him down. He's a young man. He's overzealous. And he's not qualified. Maybe if you want to get contact like a bona fide Mormon scholar, I'd love to do this. There is an urgency in the current cultural battle among Westerners. We are losing our religious identity. College campuses across America are increasingly secularist, secular and atheistic. Our mainstream media pushes an atheistic agenda in music and in film. You know, we're in a battle of ideology and morality. My generation, Generation Z, increasingly feels that mainstream Christianity is unable to answer the tough questions. My generation overwhelmingly feels as if religious statements and philosophical debate fall flat. As mainstream Christianity strengthens its academia, it loses its people. Whether the subject is about the suffering of man, the fallibility of scripture, or the specificity of heaven, mainstream Christianity seems to offer general, vague, emotional statements that lack any exhaustive answers that stand up to muster. And with all sensitivity and respect to those who do adhere to mainstream Christianity, the reality is those answers are lacking and people are fleeing because mainstream Christianity is not true. Mainstream Christianity, Judaism, Islam, Zoroastrianism, Roman paganism, Celtic spiritualism, Egyptian theology, and ancient Sumerian religions all have one thing in common. They are ancient beliefs rooted in divine manifestations to the people of earth. Not, note the word ancient. Not one of them has a significant modern witness. To many people, the miraculous god of Zoroastrianism, Ahura Mazda, is silent today and ceases to work miracles. It is the same with the mainstream Christian reinvention of Yahweh. He was heavily involved in the affairs of man in both the Old and New Testament, speaking with prophets, sending angels, and more. Mainstream Christianity, through the mouths of pastors, priests, ministers, and reverends, have effectively preached against modern miracles, alluded away from them, or have been unclear about whether they should come or not. Yet, in the spring of 1820, a world-changing event occurred. A young farm boy named Joseph Smith Jr. was appeared to in a grove of trees by God the Father, and Jesus Christ, and numerous angels. This divine counsel of prophetic selection often seen in the Bible occurred once again, ushering in the last dispensation to prepare the world for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Joseph learned that Christ's New Testament church was lost from the earth and that a great apostasy had occurred. God the Father and Jesus Christ were restoring the ancient order in the authoritative church on the earth. Not a reformation, but a restoration. After this, Joseph was appeared to by an angel named Moroni who lived on this continent long ago. And he was instructed to retrieve an ancient record on gold plates and translate them using the Urim and Thummim by the gift and power of God. Three witnesses saw these golden plates, physically held them in their hands, and saw the angel with their literal eyes. Eight more witnesses saw and held the plates. The restoration of the gospel began with one witness of the divine and continued with many. This gives great context to John's vision in Revelation 14, as he beautifully records, I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Joseph received the ironic priesthood when John the Baptist, as an angelic being, came down from heaven and laid his hands upon the heads of Joseph Smith and Oliver Cowdery. Afterward, Peter, James, and John of the New Testament laid their literal, physical, angelic hands on the heads of Joseph and Oliver and ordained them to the Melchizedek priesthood. At this time, they were made apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ. As Joseph's life continued, he was instructed by Jesus Christ and built the largest American-grown church ever. He restored the temple order with ordinances performed in thanksgiving of the atonement of Jesus Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane and on the cross of Calvary. God commanded Joseph to restore more scriptures lost from the world and write down the revelation and divine appearances. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints was established by God, the, the Father, and His Son, Jesus Christ. Uh, eventually, persecution and murder by the hands of mainstream Christians drove the church out of America. The prophet Brigham Young, Joseph's successor, led the Latter-day Saints to the land we now call Utah and helped the western side of America be established. What started with a young boy in a grove of trees is now one of the most powerful religions in the world. The Lord's Church and his temples dot the globe, and his Latter-day Saints are preparing the world for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Because of the Book of Mormon, we know Joseph Smith is a prophet. Many people like to compare Joseph's doctrines about heaven and salvation to mainstream Christianity's view of those things. However, if the Book of Mormon is true, mainstream Christianity isn't. As opposed to comparing Joseph's post-Book of Mormon teachings with mainstream Christianity, we look to see if the Book of Mormon is true. If it is, 
all presuppositions coming from mainstream Christianity are mute because their teachings come from the great apostasy. So people will go to Christian cons some people will go to Christian conspiracy theory websites and list supposed false prophecies of Joseph Smith, usually done by removing context, altering quotes, or just lying about the historical record. Having personally looked into these supposed false prophecies, I can state with honesty. Brother Joseph never had one false prophecy, not one ever. Never mind that Doctrine and Covenants 87 is an undeniably clear prophecy of the American Civil War 30 years before it occurred. Never mind that Joseph Smith's revelation in the Book of Moses and the Book of Abraham fulfilled prophecies of the Book of Enoch and ancient Abrahamic lore and theology Joseph didn't know about. Never mind the fact that Joseph's prophecies have come true with clarity and exactness as opposed to the Nostradamus-type vague predictions people peddle online. The debate on Joseph Smith's prophetic reliability is first on the nature of the Book of Mormon. Everything else takes a back seat, and I'm eager to proclaim that the Book of Mormon is true. It is a spiritually enlightening, theologically accurate, geographically evidential record of truth. To quote Second Nephi chapter 33 of the Book of Mormon, And now, my beloved brethren, and also Jew, and all ye ends of the earth, hearken unto these words, and believe in Christ. And if ye believe not in these words, believe in Christ. And if ye shall believe in Christ, ye will believe in these words, for they are the words of Christ. And he hath given them unto me, and they teach all men that they should do good. And if they are not the words of Christ, judge ye. For Christ will show unto you with great power and great glory that they are his words at the last day. And you and I shall stand face to face before his bar, and ye shall know that I have been commanded of him to write these things, notwithstanding my weakness. And I pray the Father in the name of Christ that many of us, if not all, may be saved in his kingdom at that great and last day. Unquote. All true believers in Jesus Christ will affirm the Book of Mormon, if not in this life, then at the judgment bar of God. I'll end with my testimony that Jesus Christ is our literal and actual Savior, that his New Testament church has been reestablished on earth. I know that Jesus Christ is the Redeemer of man. I know he called Joseph Smith to be his servant. This is the truth to outshine all religionists. It is God's direction in his kingdom. All right. <clears throat> Praise be the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I ask the Holy Spirit to fill me, to glorify Jesus, and expose all false prophets and false teachings that seek to usurp the glory of Jesus and his word, the Holy Bible, in Jesus' name. Now, what you just heard from Quaku is a series of assertions that I hear Muslims make all the time. Everything he said about Joseph Smith, they say about Muhammad. Muhammad made prophecies that were fulfilled. Muhammad's message is consistent with the true revelation that came before him, etc., etc., etc. Ironically, Muslims are actually closer to Christians than Mormons because Mormons are, for all intents and purposes, polytheists and idolaters, as I'm going to seek to demonstrate. But let me grant just one argument that Quaco made. Let's assume, let's assume that Joseph Smith made a <clears throat> true prophecy that still is not a basis to assume that he's a true prophet because in Deuteronomy 13 verses 1 to 5 Deuteronomy 13 verses 1 to 5 we're told that if a dreamer of dreams or a prophet says that something will take place and it takes place and but then says come let us worship gods that you have not known do not do it for the Lord your God is testing you so all this proves is that Satan empowered Joseph Smith to say something that came true in order to misle mislead people like Kwaku in following a false god and reject the true God revealed in scripture but Kwaku's battle is not with me. Kwaku's battle is with his own prophet, Joseph Smith. Because if you read the Book of Mormon, because he appealed to the Book of Mormon, and so now he's stuck with it because my citations will come from the Book of Mormon. And I want you to be leery of words being misinterpreted or redefined or twisted in order to avoid the plain reading of the passages. For example, was Joseph Smith a polytheist? Was he a Trinitarian? Or was he a modalist? Well, it depends which source you read. If I read, for example, the Book of Mormon, Mosiah, chapter 15, verses 1 of 4, surprise, surprise, Joseph Smith was a modalist heretic who thought that Jesus is the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Here, let me give you the quotes. Mosiah, chapter 15, verses 1 of 4. And now, Abinadi, excuse me for butchering these names, I would that ye should understand that God himself shall come down among the children of men and shall redeem his people, and because he dwelleth in the flesh, he shall be called the Son of God, and having subjected the flesh to the will of the Father, being the Father and the Son, and then going on, thus becoming the Father and Son, they are one God, yea, the very eternal Father of heaven and of earth. Here's another one, Mosiah 16, verse 15. Teach them that redemption cometh through Christ the Lord, who is the very eternal Father. Now, I hope Kwaku brings up Isaiah 9, 6, and try to justify 
what Joseph Smith said. So I'm inviting him, please bring up Isaiah 9, 6, because we're going to have a fun with Isaiah 9, 6. But with that said, Helaman 14, verse 12. Again, excuse my butchering of these names. I'm not familiar with these names because I don't believe the Book of Mormon any more than I believe the Book of, of Muhammad, the Quran. Helaman 14, verse 12. And also that ye might know of the coming of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Father of heaven and earth. Oh, this one's even better. Ether. Chapter 3, verses 14 and 16. Behold, I am he who prepared from the foundation of the world to redeem my people. Behold, I am Jesus Christ. I am the Father and the Son. I'm repeat it again because there's no tap dancing away from the plain reading of these passages. Like I said, be alert to people who are going to have to misinterpret, reinterpret, or twist the plain language of the text. I am the Father and the Son. Now, again, Ether 4, 7 to 12. Let's see what it says about the so-called true Jesus that appeared to Joseph Smith. <clears throat> Say, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Father of the heavens and of the earth. Ether 4, 7 and 12. Now, I can go on and on, but let me quote a few more. Because then we have passages where Jesus is not the Father, but he's distinct from the Father, praying to the Father, either because he is distinct from the Father, as later writings of Joseph Smith intimate, and later so-called prophets taught, or it's simply a different manifestation of the Father. So you have two manifestations engaging in dialogue, hence the heresy of modalism. Now, this is a very lengthy quote. 3 Nephi, chapter 11, verses 6 to 10, 13 to 14, verse 27, and verses 32, 35, 36. Very long, I know, but let me just read the relevant parts. And here we have the context because I'm pressed for time. I'm trying to get in as much passages as possible. Now here, Jesus is boldly speaking, that I'm the God of Israel and the God of the whole earth and have been slain for the sins of the world. And after this manner, ye shall baptize in my name. For behold, verily I say unto you that the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost are one. And I bear record of the Father and the Father beareth record of me and the Holy Ghost beareth record of the Father and me. Sounds Trinitarian here. But then he says he is the Father and I am the Father and the Son. And then we go into the issue, is the God of Mormon a man who then evolved into God, or has he always been God, immutably so, <clears throat> unchangeably so? Well, again, it depends on what writings of Joseph Smith <clears throat> you choose to focus on. For example, here from Doctrines and Covenants, 20 verse, uh, chapter 20, verse 17. By these things we know that there's a God in heaven who is infinite and eternal. eternal. Pay attention to how these words are going to be reinterpreted, redefined, to explain away the plain reading of these statements. Who is infinite and eternal from everlasting to everlasting, the same unchangeable God. Moroni chapter 8 verse 18. For I know that God is not a partial God, neither a changeable being, he, neither a changeable being, but he is unchangeable from all eternity to all eternity. So it's not that he evolved and became immutable. He's been immutable, immutable from eternity past to eternity future. But again, language doesn't mean what language says this too will be redefined and explained away to agree with his later perversion of earlier mormon doctrine moroni chapter 7 verse 22 for behold god knoweth all things being from everlasting to everlasting oh wow sure sounds orthodox but then when we read other statements of joseph smith not only does he stand condemned by his own false book but by the bible correctly interpreted and that's where we're going to have fun in our discussion Mosiah chapter 3 verse 5. Mosiah chapter 3 verse 5. For behold, the time cometh and is not far distant. With power, the Lord omnipotent who reigneth, who was, is from all eternity to all eternity. If language has any meaning, this clearly teaches that this is not a man who became God, but one who has been God in eternity past with no beginning in sight and will continue to be God with no end in the future just like he's god eternally in the future he must have been god eternally in the past that's the plain reading of these statements from the book of mormon alma chapter 13 verse 7 this high priest being after the order of his son which order was from the foundation of the world or in other words being without beginning of days or end of years being prepared from eternity to all eternity no beginning of days no end of years from eternity to eternity just like quaker will not deny he is god for all eternity but the text says he was also God for all eternity past. You can't have one without the other. Now, again, it's not because I believe in the Book of Mormon. What I'm trying to show is that the Mo Book of Mormon itself and statements in the doctrines of, and covenants contradict the later statements of Joseph Smith, later statements of false prophets that claim to be 
shepherds of Christ's flock. There is no restoration. It's a distortion. So Joseph Smith not only contradicts the Bible, he contradicts Joseph Smith. And here's what's interesting in the Joseph Smith translation of the Bible, Luke 10, 23, even though it's supposed to be Luke 10, 22. The Joseph Smith translation of the Bible, all things are delivered to me of my father. No man knoweth that the son is the father and the father is the son. But go read Luke 20, 10, 22, folks. That's not what it says. No man knoweth the son except the father. No man knoweth the father except the son and to whom the son chooses to reveal him. But I assume that's one of those restoration that the text was corrupted and Joseph Smith had to restore it. But Joseph Smith restored in such a way, we end up with modalism. Jesus is saying the father is the son and the son is the father. What a wonderful restoration. Thank you, Joseph Smith, for showing up on the face of the earth because we would have been lost without you. But now let's read Matthew eleven twenty-eight. 28. Matthew eleven twenty-eight. 28. All things are delivered unto me of my father, and no man knoweth the Son, but the Father. Neareth, ne neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son, and they to whom the Son will reveal him. But here's what's interesting. Notice what he add, because he's restoring. He's restoring the truth that's been corrupted in the Bible, which is an argument that all cultists and heretics have to say. Muslims say your Bible's corrupt. Why? Because if the Bible wasn't corrupt, it would agree with Islam. But the Mormons are telling me if it wasn't corrupt, it would agree with Joseph Smith. See, all cults, all cultists, have to attack the Bible to prove their false prophet is not an agent of the devil. They shall see the Father also. Folks, pick up any translation, look at any manuscript in any language of Matthew 11, which is supposed to be 27, but for some reason, the versification is different. It doesn't say they shall see the Father also. Now, I don't have a problem with that. What I'm saying is, here's a man who claims to be restoring, like Charles says Russell, Russell was restoring. Like Muhammad was restoring, all these cult leaders and false prophets have this in common. The Bible's corrupt, we need to restore it, and we need to tell you what the Bible says. Otherwise, you're lost because there was no hope until God created X, Y, and Z. See, the Christians were lost until Muhammad. But the Mormons say, no, 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 no. The Christians were lost until Joseph Smith. And what an honor that God has given us Joseph Smith, who's done more for us than Jesus himself. Utter blasphemy, exposing that the spirit that spoke to this man was the spirit of Antichrist, not the true Holy Spirit of the living God. How much time I got, Marlon? You have about one minute left. Oh, my man, you my man. But now, here's the problem. We've got problems, Kwaku, and we're going to have fun discussing this tonight, my friend, my brother in humanity. The same Joseph man goes on and contradicts himself because here we have another statement that says, God himself was once as we are now and is an exalted man. No, Joseph Smith, that's not what you said in the Book of Mormon. I don't care how many <clears throat> attempts of spinning your words, reinterpreting your words, your words are plain. He wasn't a man. And I'm going to challenge Kwaku. Can you show me in the Book of Mormon where he says God was a man and he became God? Can you show me? You can't. So what you're going to need to do is explain it away, reinterpret it to make it fit. Because a clear, sure sign of a false prophet, he speaks out of both sides of his mouth. And that's what Joseph Smith did. This agent of the devil, a perverter, not a restorer of the true gospel of Jesus Christ. There, there's a very big generational difference here, right? I'm not saying she, Sam's old, but, you know. And so because of that, I just want to make clear. Um, yeah. I don't want this discussion to be using words like cultist or cult or anything like that. Yeah. that isn't, it isn't yeah. helpful. It brings a spirit of darkness, and this is not going to be like the normal debates you see where it's like yelling back and forth, oh, Yo, you know, you're a cultist, you're wrong, of the devil. It doesn't, it's not helpful, and it kind of veers everything off track. So I, I, I well, if those I words are used that? in that sort of thing, I won't be able to do this. So I think we can both okay. make it more professional and friendly that way. So yeah, can I first comment on that real quick? No, before you ask a question, you made a statement. Let me comment because I don't want you to leave the discussion and engage me out of respect for you, not for Joseph Smith. I'll refrain from the language, but to call someone a cultist or a false prophet, that's thoroughly biblical. So I'm being faithful to the scriptures and how the prophets and the apostles addressed false teachers and those who perverted doctrine. But you just said you won't do this. So not to give you an excuse to leave, I'll refrain from that. But please do not tell me how to address a man who claims to restore a gospel that hasn't been dis uh, distorted and that's the discussion but for the sake that you stay and not leave i'll refrain because i don't want you to leave i want you to engage me so again go ahead perfect so my first question is you know you talked about the joseph's translation of the bible you read a bunch of verses of the book of mormon 
we can sort of talk about either of them, but I wanted to ask you first, when was the Joe Smith translation of the Bible completed? Off the top of my head, I can't tell you, but that's irrelevant. Well, it, it actually was never completed. Yeah. So you were speaking about it as if it was so a correction. There, Hold on, let me but, interject there. Whether it's completed or not, the passages I cited, is it from that translation or no? Well, you're citing them as if it's actually a correction, but... No, the Joseph no, I didn't say the Bible never claimed to be a correction. Um, no, no, I didn't say it was. Let me correct you again. You're misrepresenting me, and that's not going to get far in this discussion. Don't misrepresent me. I said what is stated is a distortion of what's found in Luke and Matthew. Luke and Matthew do not read the way the Joseph Smith translation says. So please don't put words in my yeah. mouth. I'm going to correct you before you do so. So now uh, answer my amazing. question. This is what I quote. Let me, well, hold on. What I quoted, is it in the Joseph Smith translation, yes or no? Yes, it is. It is in the Joseph Smith translation. However, the way you, you were speaking about translation, you were using these words as if the Joseph Smith translation said it was a correction. And in fact, it didn't claim to be. Our church, the Church okay, of Jesus Christ, okay, okay, so what is the Joseph Smith right translation? The Bible. Um, okay, let's try this and, again, because you're going down a tangent. Kweku, be patient. You're going on a tangent. I'm going to correct you along the way. He is quoting Luke and Matthew. When you change what's Luke and Matthew to have but Jesus say something, or Matthew, do not. Or or the point. Study kind of Bible okay. Because you're, you're speaking as if it's a correction. However, he yeah, doesn't claim it, it is, to be. It and so you're saying, well, he's changing it. Many scholars actually read the JST and read it as more of Joseph Smith's personal study and understanding of what the Bible's saying. And so, okay, freedom to hold it up that. as an authoritative okay, document isn't really fair. It, it isn't representative okay, of what well, the JST is supposed to be. Okay, so let me go with that. Let me go with that. You just confirmed my point. If that's simply his interpretation, his interpretation is modalistic. So, you're still stuck with the problem. Please don't bring up these tangents and these red herrings. Focus on the issue. Those verses that I quoted, he said, People know the Father is the Son, and the Son is the Father. So now you just admit that's his interpretation understanding. His interpretation is modalistic. So keep to the meat of the matter. Don't so get into I, these. I would say admit that okay. because if you, again, if you read, you understand the way the JST was, com was completed, you discover that he's writing things, and he's actually writing different ideas out. So when you look at the manuscripts so of the, the JST, the there's not actually a, well, he's changing this to this. It seems more of... Like I wonder if Mormon. this could mean this or this or this. And Can you, you actually have different copies of it. So you read the JST and you said it was a correction of the Bible, but that's just not accurate. And that's never what he claimed for it to be. And so Kweku, can you show me where he said, I wonder if it's this and this. You're now adding to the words of a dead prophet, unless you have the ability to go back in time and know his studies time. or the interpreter foundation. Show me where he says that. Show me where he says, I wonder if it means this. Quote your source. Don't give me your opinion because I said so that's yeah, what so you're going to do. Ask you, have, you, have you ever heard of Maxwell Institute or BBU Studies or... Give me the, the man. Don't give me what later people said to try to get away from the problems he created for your church. See, this is well, my point. Later people, I said in those my actual organizations that come out of universities, and what they do is they can provide you with all the manuscripts and they can actually give you a timeline of when things are written and commentary so on them. Where, so so where, I where, like where to talk about those things. However, I can't talk about those things before I like finish my sentence. Go ahead, get, it, to, it get to the work. Of the so, yeah, I, 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 I encourage all people watching this to go to those websites Please. to look at those things, to find the timeline of the JST, but presenting it as if it's a replacement of the Bible Wait, cool. This is accurate. the time for Come the question. Uh, okay, get to your questions. Get to your questions. Don't pontificate because when you do that, you're going into damage control and it's not going to help you. Get to your so, questions. I, I, I again, I, I <laughs> this is this has to be a positive experience. This can't be good. Your questions. So, I, 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 I I'm still going to hold and press you that. If there is dialogue, isn't respectful. This isn't going to happen with the Book of Mormon. I, how many? Book of Mormon verses, do you believe teach modalism or Trinitarianism? Irrelevant. I gave you enough to show he taught modalism. So don't ask me irrelevant questions. Deal with the evidence I gave you. In fact, I'm going to return the favor. Quote Sam, a verse yeah. from the Book of Mormon. If you don't answer my questions, this isn't going to happen. This needs to be a good debate. And I think it you're just sort debate. of bouncing around. Being a so I just ask, you can say, don't I'm not sure. Okay. So all right, okay. guys. Just, All right, guys. Just, just All right, guys. All right. So, so, so this is what we're going to do because it appears that the free freestyle discussion is not 
not working out. So I'm going to put 10 yeah. minute restrictions on it. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a, we're going to, we're going to do, we're probably about five minutes in. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead, trans, uh, convert this into a 60 minute cross examination where both parties yeah, get 10 minute opportunities to ask questions. Those questions need to be direct. And if they require just a yes or no, let's answer them yes or no. If they require maybe a couple more words of clarification, let's allow it and not cut the person off. Remember, we yeah, want this dialogue to be solid. And we want the audience, because it's a, a huge art. It's probably my biggest show so far, just to be honest with you. We want both for, want want people to be able to... Something. Go ahead. Brother, can I predict something? Can you have him stop telling me how to answer questions and threaten to leave if I don't answer the way he wants? Because okay. that's rude and that's that dominant. He doesn't tell the debater how to answer his questions. If he doesn't like my answers, he can refute them, but not keep threatening that he's going to walk away because that shows cowardice. And I'm trying to give him respect. Don't tell me how to answer your questions. You don't like my answers. Let the people judge whether I answered you correctly or I'm evading your questions. But this is not what you do. You don't dictate to someone the format of how to answer a question. All right. Well, right. I, so believe let's in, I believe in social literacy. And I believe if you don't have that, then nothing gets answered. And then nobody can walk away feeling enlightened or even feeling as if it was. Everyone here okay. feels enlightened. Okay. Okay, guys. Okay. Yeah. So I think that's I think that's a fair point. If he has a response that you are necessarily disagreeing with, Kwaku, go ahead and just challenge him on it. Continue to press him on it and let the conversation evolve organically out of that. So with that said, we're, I'm going to start your time over, Kwaku. So go ahead and you have 10 minutes to go ahead and cross-examine now, Sam. Yeah. So, yeah, my question remains, how many Book of Mormon verses do you believe allude to the Trinity or modalism? Enough to show that there are passages that talk about God in Trinitarian terms and also God in modalistic terms. Mm. So are you familiar with Latter-day Saint and belief on how Jesus Christ is the Father? If, if no, I'm not interested in Joseph Smith because the proposition of the debate was Joseph Smith. We, we focused on the person of Joseph Smith and yeah, the yeah. theological. Let me, let, me, let me make my point. The debate is Joseph Smith, his theology, as well as whether his theology comports to the Bible. I'm aware what later so-called prophets and the scholars of Mormonism have said, and I'm also aware of what Joseph Smith has said later on. But the focus was specifically on Joseph Smith. So I gave you the most authoritative source, the Book of Mormon. We can go into other sources, but the fact remains, this is what you have in the Book of Mormon. Now, if you can show a statement where he says that the father was a man who became God in the Book of Mormon, then bring it out so we can engage it. Bring that statement out for me so I can engage it. Okay, so I, I'll ask again, do you know what Joseph Smith taught and what Latter-day Saints currently believe is the doctrine of how Christ is the father? Do you, Christ is the father of blank. Could you fill in the blank? Yeah, well, I know that he contradicted himself and that you have statements in the Book of Mormon where he says, Jesus prays to the Father, assumption showing that he's not the Father. But then there are statements in the Book of Mormon. Jesus says, I am the Father and the Son. But then later statements, <clears throat> Jesus is not the Father. He is Jehovah, the Son of Elohim. And Elohim was a man who was exalted to God's status. But that's the whole point. He contradicts himself, proving he's a false prophet. Now, disprove me. So I wouldn't say any of those are contradictions if you understand the context and more of what was written. Okay, give but me again, the context. Ask Jesus is the father of blank, according to Joseph Smith. Can you show me in any of the statements I cited where he made that qualification? I'm going to show you a lot of statements. I'm asking you first to see if you've done some Please of the research to film the book. Give it Jesus to me. Give me from the, the Book of Mormon. I'm waiting for you. From the Book of Mormon, show me where he no, qualified. So I'm you, so I'd like you to answer the question. Jesus is the father right. of blank. If you don't know, it's fine to say, I don't know. I just, I'm asking you if you, if according to Joseph Smith and Latter-day Saint doctrine, Jesus is what the I father quoted, of blank. Please fill the no, what I quoted, it, it says here. Let me show you what he did say. Okay. Let me just go back to him. Behold, I am he who was prepared from the foundation world to redeem my people. Behold, I am Jesus Christ. I am the Father and the Son. Okay. So now, <clears throat> I am the God of Israel and the God of the whole earth. The Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are one. And he doesn't even specify the kind of oneness. Right. right. But he obviously, says, there are more than one quote about Jesus being the Father. You, you can rely on one quote. You can look at the plethora. I'm well, asking the authoritative well, quick, 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 words me, of that. Just, Jesus is the Father of not, the blank. Okay, Kweku, yeah. you're not you're not yeah. helping. Yeah, let's, your case. Let me yeah let's allow him to respond, Kweku. You're not solving the dilemma for your case because I started my statements by saying 
Joseph Smith contradicts himself in the Book of Mormon and later statements. So if you want to harmonize them, give me your best so we can see whether your harmonization is a desperate spin or is it faithful to the context. The statements I, I quoted do not qualify in what sense Jesus is the Father. Now, give so me a I'm statement. Not because I'm asking the questions. I'm cross-examining you right now. So again, I'm and asking, I'm we can talk about supposed contradictions and all those things, but the first question yeah. I've asked, and I'm repeating it till I get an answer, according to Joseph Smith and Latter-day Saint doctrine, Jesus is the father of blank. Please fill in the blank. According to Joseph Smith in the Book of Mormon, he doesn't make such qualification, but maybe it's there. Prove me wrong. I'm not a scholar. Go ahead. Show me where he makes that qualification in the Book of Mormon. I'm asking, do you not know? It's okay. I would just like a simple answer. Give me from the book I've been saying. Show me from the Book of Mormon the qualification. Educate me. I'm it's just great. Learning. Great. Yeah, you don't know. According to Latter-day Saint doctrine and Joseph Smith, overwhelmingly, Jesus is the father of our salvation. So he's the father of our salvation. Give me because the of that, I'm, I'm continuing to answer. Because of that, 